Welcome. In today's episode, we're going to check out Honda's new disaster relief robot. Then we're going to move into eating food that levitates, and we're going to wrap everything up with the Microfactory, a swarm bot system that is meant to build things. This is Zach DTV, the place for interesting news from around the net, and let's get right into this. We're going to start with the new robot that Honda just unveiled. This bipedal robot was based off all the years worth of knowledge they've gained by making the Asmobot. As you can see, there's a lot of iterations of that. I didn't realize they had so many of them. Well, the E2DR builds off of that information with a stronger waterproof frame and the ability to climb ladders, stairs, and squeeze through tight spaces. According to Honda, there were a couple key areas that they wanted this robot to function in flawlessly. Like three-dimensional movement, such as stairs, step ladders, and vertical ladders, with minimum size cages, including transitions between ladders and steps. Moving in narrow, free widths, and narrow space. Moving over pipes on the floor, passing through closed doors along corridors, able to absorb contacts while moving moving upon scattered debris, perception of environment for planning and monitoring, and prevention of catastrophic fall when robot loses power while moving in a high place such as stairs and ladders. This robot stands at 1.68 meters tall, so that's what, around 5 feet tall? It's a little shorter than your average human male, but in a robot that packs so much into it, size doesn't matter. It does have 33 degrees of freedom, which is basically the same as saying 33 different joints where it can bend, turn, move, stuff like that. A neat little trick the E2DR can do is rotate its torso 180 degrees in order to go up step ladders. So that way its knees are bending backwards and they don't hit the rungs of the ladder on its way up. Although it does make for a creepy looking robot. As far as manipulating tools go, however, it doesn't have a lot of movement in its hands. The hands have been designed for gripping stairs, railings, and ladders. And they figure if the robot is going to go into a situation, tools would need to be changed out. So it doesn't have to hold on to much. And tools would be specifically designed to go with this bot. And probably remotely controlled as well. The head does have a couple neat features like two laser rangefinders. It also packs a monocular camera with LED flashlight. And there's also cameras and 3D sensors in both of his hands. I guess that way you can get a real close-up view of what you're working on. From the looks of it, it seems like Honda did build this robot to meet the specs that they were looking for. I mentioned them earlier. And it has been able to complete most of those tasks. Although it does look kind of funny when completing some of them. All in all though, I think this would be great for search and rescue. Because to me, a lot of problems with our modern robotics can be handled by putting things up on two legs. That's how our world is built. And I have to wonder, since this is based on the ASMO, will they also give it all the AI that allows it to recognize people and say hello and stuff like that? Let me know what you think. Will this crazy thing be a help in disaster zones? Leave me a message in the comments down below. Next up, if you know me, you know I like the weird stuff out there. And this one is pretty weird. This is called Tasty Floats. This comes to us from the SCHI lab at the University of Sussex, and they designed this system as a contactless food delivery method. That is exactly what it sounds like. They want to be able to put food in a person's mouth without using utensils. They built this system in order to see if the way food is presented to us, the way it is transported to our mouth, can change the perceived flavor of the food. And you know what? They found that it did. These researchers wanted to see what effect levitation would have on three of the five major tastes. Sweet, bitter, and umami. And what they found is actually pretty interesting here. They started out delivering these foods via pipe it into the mouths of the study's participants. They use this sort of like their control. They found that when food was levitated, however, what they found is things like the sweet would be sweeter. The bitter, not as bitter. The umami, even more umami e. Pleasant, I guess, would be the right word for it. These researchers believe that there is a variety of uses for this, but most of them come down to enhancing an experience. They say things like in a cinema setting, they could float different flavors out in front of people to match up with the uh, scene going on on the screen. Or in a gaming environment, it'd give you the ability to taste the potion that you're drinking in order to restore your life. And to me, 
those are the best uses I could think of too. If you haven't guessed it by now, this does use acoustic levitation. It's using sound waves to make these things float. By shooting waves at each other, they can position these things right in the middle of it. They have also designed the system so it can be used for more than just one morsel of food at a time. Like here you see, they put together a hamburger. Although it's really small and floating, it is still a hamburger. Let me know what you think about this one. I know it's a little odd and it's a little useless, but I thought it was kind of cool. They're levitating food. And finally, I want to get into the micro factory. This is a swarm of robots based on like a hive mentality developed by SRI International. These robots are able to be magnetically controlled. Basically, they're riding on top of a printed magnet that has pathways for them to go different places. Each robot is individually controlled and they can be tasked to do different things. Because they are magnetic, they can do stuff like go up walls over a, a bumpy ribbon and they move really, really fast. That video is in real time. And as you can see, when it comes to completing a task, these robots work in conjunction with each other. They all have their program duties or program tasks. Like here, they're building the scaffolding. The one robot goes and picks up the carbon rod. Another robot applies glue. They attach rod. Robot goes back to where it needs to, and they can build these structures autonomously once they get the initial program. The thing I found so fascinating about these robots, though, is their size. Look at how small they are. If you could get a lot of these all working together, this might be better than 3D printing for making objects at a consumer level. Or even thinking bigger, you could have a factory full of these robots running around manufacturing just about anything you could think of. So what do you think? Which one of these technologies is gonna have the biggest impact on our future? Don't tell me it's the floating food either because we know that's not true. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. Give me a thumbs up, it really helped my channel grow. And if you want more news like this five days a week, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you know when I upload something new. I am here Monday through Friday, so until next time, have fun and be safe.